Good morning. First session. Welcome all. Um, I will give a presentation about 10 tips to improve Joomla's usability. My name is Sander Potcher. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I love contributing to the Joomla project locally, internationally. Uh, do have my own company, Perfect Web Team, based in the Netherlands as well. And my extension, ACL Manager. Slides of this presentation will be available on my website, so you're welcome to write down anything you want, but it will also be available online. So, my main question to you, to start off, is Joomla user-friendly in your opinion? Can I see hands of people who think that Joomla is user-friendly? Nobody thinks Joomla is user-friendly? How? Half. <laughs> and why half? Uh, because there's much to be you know, improved. Like that. Much to be improved. Yeah. Not so, for experts, but for normal, let's say, proud users. Yeah. So let's split that question. Is Joomla user friendly for us as web developers, as website builders? of people that are using Joomla for a longer time already. Who thinks Joomla is user-friendly in that case? That's more already. Not everybody, but at least a lot more. That's probably why you're using Joomla as well. But if we ask a question again, who thinks that Joomla is user-friendly for the end users of your website? Half. It could be better. I think a lot of people are being frustrated with Joomla. And they say, yeah, Joomla is bad. But I think that we all, as web builders, can improve that a lot. So I live in the Netherlands in a nice town, town called Wesp. And I live there with uh, a dog who really loves Joomla anyway, and my girlfriend. And my girlfriend, oh, sorry, yeah, I have to change that. Thank you. <laughs> I just asked her. Uh, I proposed her last week, so fiancé. Thank you, Peter. Um, <laughs> so um, she mainly knows Joomla of the time that I'm being away at Joomla conferences, like now, or at one of the first uh, Joomla World Conferences on the back, or enjoying the Joomla World Conference in November. Um, but she's really a Joomla newbie. She never used Joomla before. So. I set up a very basic website, uh, a Joomla 3 install uh, about our dog, uh, with just a couple articles, and I gave her an exercise. And the exercise was really simple, I think, for you. Like, log in with the provided uh, login credentials, and then publish an article. And the article should be published on the home page. Needs a title, a bit of content, an image, which was already available on the website, called uh, strand.gpf, and a tag. And after that, of course, log out of the website. So I set up a default Joomla installation with the blogging sample data. Really just the installation, click on the sample data set, and then uh, set it up. And I asked her to perform this exercise, and I recorded this screen. So she started to log in on the website. That was not too difficult with their username and password. And then you end up in a page which isn't really helpful, I think, by default in Joomla. You get to the profile. We need to use the profile each time someone logs in on a website. I don't think. But she finds the, uh, the menu item, create a post, starts to type the title, alias. Well, she decided to skip it anyway, and then she has the content where I prepared a bit of content on the right click of the mouse, so you don't have to type it, otherwise it will be, take longer this session. So, and then the next step is to insert an image. Okay, interesting. Ah, that's easy. Okay. Hmm, he told me there was an image somewhere. Let's try something else. Okay, what else do we have? Formatting, table, tools, insert, yeah. Again, that image. I want to insert an image, but what's next? Source. I don't know what source is. Okay, close again. There's another built-in image. Ah, that's more helpful. And there I can find the image. Okay, uh, insert. Okay, the image is there. So the next step is to add the tag. 
she finds a button article, but she gets extreme. Yeah, okay, that's not really what I'm looking for. Page break. Hmm. No, no. Read more. Oh, wow, that's a nice red line. <laughs> okay, uh, again, those menus. Maybe it's there. Table, format, view, insert, edit. Hmm? No, again, toggle editor. Will that be a tag? <laughs> oh, what happened now? <laughs> oh, now my menu, which was useful in the beginning, is gone in, in entirely. Okay. Oh, wait, and you, you can't see it because the beamer is too high, but publishing tab, yeah. Ah, there's the text. So she stopped, uh, started to type. Okay, she's clever enough to press enter to make sure the new tag is being saved. And then the article is submitted. So I told her, okay, what was the purpose? It should be published on the homepage. So go to the homepage. Hmm, where's the article? Yeah, if I create it again, but I just created one. Where's the gun? Uh, so the older login, no, back, site administrator, ah, oh, wait a second, there's my article, ah, again, the screen I've been used to, like the editor, let's see, it needs to be on the home page, what would be that, okay, um, save and close, back, oh, here's the overview again, I see more articles, hmm, Oh, wait a second, I see a small difference between the category. It being published in uncategorized, which should be blocked. Maybe that's the thing. So let's open up the article again and try to find an option to change the category. Okay, the menu, no, I haven't seen uh, publishing. Okay, good option. A lot of options, of course. Ah, even more options. Permissions. Ah, that's interesting. Content. Mm. In previous step, I came a step further. When I click on the toggle editor, maybe it's helpful again to click on the toggle editor. <laughs> Publishing. No. Hmm. Where is it? Mm. Images and links. No. Oh, wait. There are even more options on the right of the screen. I haven't seen that before. So I saved it. Okay on the home page and she recognized there was a new tab open so get back to the home page and there is the article okay last step log out of the website okay let's log in click on log out really clear right so she was able to perform this very simple exercise i think we all agree on in 8 minute 22 the video was played at twice the speed so who thinks this can be better Right. So I analyzed this screen recording of the video from what mistakes she made and tried to come up with 10 ideas to improve this submission for this specific task. And those are the 10 uh, tips to improve the usability. The first one is an easy one, the login one. So we notice when she logged in on the screen, she get to the edit your profile page. That's the default. Who's changing that? Nobody changed this? Ah, uh, yes, okay, glad. <laughs> so, maybe it's more useful if someone logs in on a website where she needs to publish articles, you redirect her to a page with the written blog post and a button to create a new one. So, you can change it pretty simple. When you go to the menu item, you can simply change the login redirect. And this is also a small thing that we can still improve in Joomla. I mean, we have to type the URL manually, but in the module, there's a uh, drop down select where we can select a menu item. So that's still a thing we as developers need to fix that there's a drop down as well to select one of the menu items. But that's at least a very simple imp improvement to make sure that people don't get lost on the website as soon as they log in. The second suggestion is keep it simple. I mean, when you install the default sample data, you have a lot of items, a lot of things, and quite often when I visit Joomla website, I still see a lot of Joomla sample data, and even menus, and like site administrator, where she end up being in the administrative part of the website. Is that really what we want, that the user ends up in the administrative part because we left their button? No, so make sure you clean it up. <coughs> but also, when you launch your website, 
remove the sample data of Joomla, the articles. So often when you click on the Joomla website and type for welcome on the front page on a search, you can still find those articles as the uh, data on the website because they are not properly removed and the trash is not empty, for example. Another one is the last tab. Okay, I have to log out and to log out, I have to click on the login button, right? That's a very easy solution for it. You can change it to log out and then there's a log out. Even better, and you can uh, achieve that with a template override, is that you don't have to click on log out and log out again, but simply log out directly in the menu item. That's possible. But at least a small step is to have two menu items. One called login and one called log out. The login is only visible to guests of your website, so people that are not logged in on your website. And the other one is only visible for a certain user group, so a group that is logged in on your website. At least a small improvement, but makes it much easier for people to follow where they are. The Joomla settings. There are many of them. Who thinks there are too many Joomla settings? <coughs> okay, half of the group. But the Joomla settings are in the end also useful. And some are more useful than the others. But who uh, have ever had a client uh, calling? Yeah, I worked on an article for an hour and then a, a client called. And then I grabbed a cup of coffee and I uh, continued with the article. And when I was ready, I hit the save button and I get the error. Please log in first. I think we all did once. And that's really frustrating for people. If you don't explain them there's a session or whatever, something like that, and by default it's set to 15 minutes, which is not too long. I mean, one phone call, one cup of coffee, and you're done. So improve that, uh, increase that value to, for example, 60, and also explain and tell your client. To, uh, and I will show another option to make it even more easier for people to make sure that don't have that issue. Another one which would make uh, my girlfriend's life much easier, when she submitted an article, the website basically had two categories. One was uncategorized and one blog. For the submit a new article, the create blog post in this case, you can define the default category an article needs to be placed in. So if that's only one category, make sure that that one is selected. So they can't make mistakes with different uh, categories that are not uh, accessible on the website, so the article is gone or somewhere on the website. So, in this case, you will select yes for the default category and then the blog to make sure that the article is always in the blog category. If you don't select it, Joomla will look at the ACL settings and compile the list of available categories depending on the access. The other one is the text editor. Of course, Joomla has a very nice default text editor. Who's using the default Joomla text editor? Two. <laughs> Most of you probably using uh, one of the available text editor extensions. Uh, why? I want more flexibility. I don't want all those clients to be able to click on all those different formatting things. But did you know that this is a plugin? And the plugin of this editor has several configuration options as well. So if you want a very simple version of the default Joomla editor, you go to the editor Tiny MCE, and you can select the functionality simple. And then you really get a very basic editor with just the, the strong, the italic uh, functionality, if that's fine for your website. In some cases, it's good enough. So you don't even have to use another extension. You can also select, uh, by default, it's the advanced, by the way. You can also select the extended editor functionality. And in that way, you can see there's a tab on top of it. There are all type of options in this plugin for all the available options in the editor. So there are some possibilities to configure the default Joomla editor. Again, there's a lot of reasons to still use one of the other uh, available extensions. For example, this works for all of your user groups. You can't set it for specific user groups. It's in general for your entire website. But at least you get a more clean editor. Uh, the other one is the available buttons on the button. We have the article, the image, the page break, the read more, and the toggle editor. Quite often, people don't use. I mean, 
how many of you are using uh, the page break on each of your websites? No, that's what I guessed. Those buttons are plugins in Joomla. So when you go to, to, to the plugin manager and filter for the editor extended type of plugin, you can see four plugins by default. And you can disable the ones you don't need. So if, for example, if you only need to read more button, you can leave that one enabled and the other one disabled so they can't uh, use those add buttons and get confused with them. So in that way, when we make those changes, you get from the default Joomla editor a much more cleaner version with really some basic options without using an extension. Another option of the site configuration. I mean, we, de we do have these access levels. How many of your clients directly get what super users are? I'm your client, I'm your super user, or not? I mean, we know as site manager, but your clients, or what is special? Okay, yeah. All of these access levels can be renamed and you can make something else of it. So you can rename it to anyone or make sure that uh, when you select the access level, it's only available for bloggers, which is much more clear for people that are using it. You can also apply, for example, the, if they have a certain naming convention within a company or within uh, an organization, you can apply that to the access level. So someone who knows the terminology of an organization can directly apply that on the website as well. It's very simple. Open up an access level, there's a level title, and change it. Save it, and you're ready. A very sm uh, small change, but can make a big difference for the people that have to use your website. Another one is no unnecessary access. I mean, when we build a website, of course we provide people a super user account if they don't like us anymore and want to move to another company. We, that's fine. But we also create a specific access level, a user group, for only their daily needs of the website. And that's limited a lot of functionality in the uh, backend of Joomla. So only the areas that they really have to use on a daily basis are available when they log in. And it's not because we don't trust our clients. It's because we don't want to confuse them with all type of options and uh, in the back end, which only make them confused. And also uh, to prevent the site administrator, and it's again a bit high, but also for, for example, in the uh, front end of the website, there's not an option uh, to edit the modules directly. But for some modules, like the menu, you don't want to be able to uh, uh, that people modify it. It's ma mainly only for a custom HTML module, for example. You can use the access levels for that. So by default, there are a lot of user groups in Joomla. You can remove them. I would keep the public one as super user, but maybe rename the super user to something that's more understandable and start defining new groups and permissions uh, according to their needs. So for example, create a group bloggers which had only access to log in on the front end of the website. That's all. The rest I don't configure, so they can't perform an action. And then the next thing is that I only allow them to create new articles and edit the state of it and edit their own articles for the blogger group and the blog category. In that way, they are really limited, but enough for what they have to do on the website. So that also allows you to, for example, when you have a company with several departments, that the departments can only edit the own articles of their department rather than the entire company. Another great feature of Joomla nowadays is language overrides. Who ever use the language overrides in one of the projects? Okay, that's a lot already. <sighs> It's really simple and really powerful to change it without the need to change the language file each time you update Joomla. So again, back to the access level. There's a label on top of it, it's called access. Okay, access. Is that really clear for the people that have to use your website? Or do you change it to, for example, visible for? Maybe that makes it a bit easier for people to understand. Any text within Joomla on the front end or the back end of the website can be overridden with language overrides. Another uh, example, um, if you have that session expire uh, issue, is that a lot of people uh, don't really understand unpublished. And 
for the English version, it might be kind of understandable, but I know, for example, in a Dutch translation, it's like a word that nobody gets. For many people, it makes more sense if you change that into concept. Especially for websites where once an article is published, it will never be unpublished or never be removed. So if there's an article being created and people are not ready to publish it yet, okay, it's still a concept and save it. So in that way they know and understand it's not visible directly on the website, but probably hit the save button more often and prevent the session of that. So when you go to the language manager, there's a tab called overrides with an overview of the overrides you created already. And you can simply create new ones by clicking the new button. You get a screen where you can search for the visible language or the language string. So the language string is more like this. And then you get the suggestions when you click on it, interface thing in Joomla, but it moves over there. And then you can override it and save it. Please make sure if you use it that you select the correct language before creating it. Because in the screen to create it, you can't select the language anymore. So you have to apply that filter before you hit the new button. Template overrides. Who ever used template overrides? Many of you. And I think one of the main reasons probably to create template overrides is to improve the usability or change the formatting. And it's really powerful. So if we go back to this uh, create article screen in Joomla, it's not really user friendly. I mean, if people really start to use Joomla and have to publish an article once in the two or three months and get all these options behind the tabs and they only have to use a small part of it, is it really what we want the people to look at? Do you think they get back home and say, oh, Joomla is a great product? I don't think so. So I created an override and again, the screen is not high enough, but I uh, basically got inspired by WordPress, for example. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, Word WordPress is so user-friendly to publish an article. So I looked at it. What are they doing differently? They're simply hiding a lot of the options. They only allow the people to fill in the things that they really need. Keep it clean. Keep it simple. So I created an override where there's a title. On top of it, a big area to type your text. And on the side, only the options that are really needed to perform certain tasks. Another step, if you're not that good in template overrides yet, you can also use CSS and JavaScript to hide fields. Display none is a very simple but powerful thing. Most of the fields in Joomla have their own class, so you can really hide a specific field. Um, so for example, when you have the title by default, I mean, it's a small input area. And the alias, a lot of people don't get it. And it's been generated, okay, fine, so let's don't display it. So wouldn't it be better if we have it over the entire width a bit larger so people clearly see, okay, this is the title of the article. This can be achieved with a couple lines of J, uh, jQuery, JavaScript, and a bit of CSS. Use it in your template, and it's getting improved already. Another great feature of Joomla is the separate input fields in Joomla nowadays with Article Manager. I mean, you saw it already in example. An image is being added and it's been floating all around or people uploading like 2,000 pixel image and your entire website is totally messed up because of the user. Nowadays, there are the option to select a specific image, an intro image and full image. In the back end, it's on the images and link tab, and people select it, and Joomla, and with the image float, you can define if it will be left or right aligned. And in that way, we prevent the articles going to look like this, but we can really, really make sure that they are properly aligned in the article. And of course, you can use CSS or your template override to make this full width or on the, on the right always, or always specific dimensions. You can use that, uh, uh, improvements with that. So with these improvements, I gave here the same exercise. And of course, she's no longer a complete newbie with Joomla because she did the exercise one. But again, let's see if it was more easier for her to perform the task right now. So again, twice the speed, login. 
with your username, the password. Create a new blog post. And then she had to select an image. And can you see I removed, removed the sample data as well, like the banners, the Joomla logos. And the tag on the bottom of it, which is still a bit confusing that people don't directly get always that if they have to add a new one, they have to press enter. And then save it. And after that, after saving, it was directly being redirected back to the home page where the article is visible. So again, this time, much faster. 129. The lesson I learned from this was look over the shoulder of your website user. Who ever looked over the shoulder when the end user was using their website? Who does that with every project? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting to see what your users are doing on your website. I mean, you think that people are behaving on a certain way in the website, but they don't. And it can be a simple, a small change that can improve the usability a lot. And you can detect them by simply looking over the shoulders of your users. So, <coughs> A couple tips when you start some really basic usability testing. Of course, you can hire expensive companies that perform usability testing for you, but you can do it yourself, very simple. Make some tasks based on their own situation. So don't give them some default general, uh, don't let them create an article if they don't have to ever do that on a website. So really look in what they have to do on a daily task on a website and give them that task. Tell them it's a website test and not a user test. And repeat that. And repeat that and repeat that. Because people are tend like, oh no, now I'm getting tested if I can properly use this website. No, it's not a test of the user. It's really a test of the website. Another challenge for the people that need to test is to speak out loud. And that's hard. I mean, we, we always think in our heads, but they really have to try to speak out loud what they see, what they do, what they're looking for, what, they, uh, what frustrates them, what confuses them, or why they clicked on a certain button. Another one, don't help. I mean, when they're going to publish that article in three months from now, you won't be there. So they have to do it themselves. Um, only if they really get lost, ask questions. Because most of the time when they got lost, they forget to think out loud. So what are you looking for? What do you expect to see here? What button are you missing? Or what confused you? Ask those questions at the, that moment rather than point them, you have to click on this button to create a new article. No, ask questions. And again, a user is not stupid. I mean, we tend to easily say, yeah, they, they don't use computers, but they have to use your website. So you can't say a user is stupid. No, if you think a user is stupid, your website is stupid because it's not clear enough for that user. And the last tip is to record the test. And by recording the test, you can easily look afterwards at what they changed on the website. We recently worked on a large project. Uh, it was for a Dutch radio station called Phoenix. And we did two days of user testing. And we invited uh, the people that usually listen to the radio station uh, one by one for, for two days in a row and gave them the website in front of them. Again, the menu is a bit on top. And we worked a lot on it, this. And a lot of discussions and conversations and meetings with the client we worked on this. But still, by two days of testing, the website was changed a lot. An example. And it's not really, yeah, it's, it's just visible on here. Here's a, an, a button menu item that's called win. Of course, on a radio station, people can listen to something and, okay, go to the website and join or promotion to get prizes for an event or whatever. Within Phoenix, the client, they always speak about uh, channel broad actions internally. So they in initially want this menu item to be called actions. 
because they thought, okay, we called actions, so if we have a menu item actions, people can find it. So one of the tasks in the test was, okay, you heard something on the radio, you can win tickets for a certain event, go to the website, join it, and get those tickets. And what all of the people on the first day did was click on events and then find the event. And of course, they were able to find the action over there as well, but they simply completely ignored the action in the menu item. Then after the first day, we did a short sprint to improve a couple of things to see if the second day people understand it better. And we changed this into win. And people directly found it the next day directly when they get that question. So it can be very small things that makes people really confused or find the website better. And if you spend that uh, time with the users, you make your website much better. It all comes down to the concept of don't make me think. I mean, if you have a website with a lot of menus, with a lot of options, with a, a horizontal menu, a left menu, and maybe some buttons on the page itself, you offer them a lot of options, which only makes it more difficult for people to make a decision. Instead of five options, they offer, you offer them 25. Makes that easier for them? No. Steve Krug, who knows this book? For those that don't know it, it's a really nice book to read over. It's a really old book already, and it's a really lot of, indeed, common sense. And when you read, yeah, I know that, but are you actually do it and improve it on your website? I think a lot of you don't. So the template override I created for this test uh, is also available. And uh, it's on the website. And after the uh, first presentation I gave, uh, gave this, there was a suggestion about the alias. And what WordPress does as well, as soon as you start typing, it auto-compiles the URL under it. So I changed it as well. Um, let's see. So as soon as you start typing, and this is now because it's my local host, but normally you see the, the URL of the website. So they basically see directly where the article will be published. And that makes it much more easier for people, I think, to understand what the alias is about. Then you click on it, and it's changed. And that's indeed what WordPress does as well. But why can't we do it in Joomla? I mean, I think if we start making these type of changes in Joomla, a lot of people will get that alias concept much better. And we prevent a field that people need to fill out. Why aren't are such changes already? Why, why don't we have such changes already in Joomla? Are they waiting like there are so many things like that, small, simple pieces to be improved so that we just sit and do stuff. Yeah. And I'm just asking myself constantly, why? why are, what are they waiting for? Maybe you have the answer. It's right? waiting for you. I'm not a hard programmer. So, so actually, I plan to contribute this to Joomla 10. So you probably have to wait a couple of years. No, but like it, it all comes down, like if, for example, I worked on this right now and I gave this presentation now a couple of times to get some feedback on it. And after one of the first times, I get some feedback around this area, so I improved it. So that's why I show it right now as well, to get feedback and ideas and how can we improve the article submission in Joomla. And when we have a good proper system that's working well, then it comes down to us as the community to do a pull request on the Joomla code and make sure the code gets in there. And then we need a couple of people that are going to test it, basically only two. So in the end, we can make sure that this kind of submission screen is in Joomla by the end of this weekend, if we want. You, you mean when you... Uh, it says it change the alias and you can click on it and then you get the alias. Yeah. But why doesn't it just change until it changes the title? That will change as well. That changes as well. But um, and sometimes, sometimes people create a long title.
but one for SEO purposes, different words in the alias, because that will be the URL. So um, in general, people don't look at the alias field at all. But I know also some websites that really look carefully in what words they put in a URL to make sure that they can be fine uh, on Google or the other side. Yeah. Now, now, you mean if you change this? Yeah. That doesn't matter in the end. It's only the the number. And if you ch start changing this on the front end, I mean. Right now, this is zero, zero, but when an article, because this article is not safe yet, so it do, doesn't have an ID yet. Yeah. Yeah, the, in the end, the, the, URL, the URL will be changed, and for the, the proper way, it should be redirected to the new one. Um, if they change it, the link will still work. I mean, if, if I change it to whatever I want, the link will still work as long as those numbers are there. That's the only identifying area of the, the, the article URL in Joomla. But still, it will be good if there will be also an additional system that as soon as you change an alias, there's some record or maybe in a redirect manager to make sure that... Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this template override um, is available on GitHub as well for testing purposes on your, on your projects if you want. Uh, the link will be on my website, the short link, uh, to test it out as well. One second. <laughs> um, and use it, provide feedback. Uh, several people did already, which was really interesting. And of course, this one is specifically focused on someone that needs to select uh, publish an article in one specific category, so there's no category selection, but that can be easily changed within the override to have that drop down for the categories as well. But again, it is very interesting to think about how can I improve my project, and I think it's also a challenge for us as the Joomla community to see how can we improve the usability of Joomla. Get the feedback of your end users, get them to Joomla and try to contribute a pull request uh, maybe tomorrow during the Make It Happen session. I'm not sure if there are options for that, uh, that uh, during the Make It Happen. But think about how you can improve Joomla. And don't think like, okay, yeah, that's really annoying in Joomla and don't do anything with it. If you can't code, but you do have a great ID to improve the usability of Joomla, you can also put that as a feature request or uh, an issue. And hopefully someone else will say, okay, that's a great ID and I can code and it's like uh, 10 minutes of work and it's being fixed tomorrow. Um, there's also an article about the same concept in uh, the Joomla community magazine, and the slide links and code will be available um, in like an hour on my, on my website. So there were a couple other questions. Alex. Um, the, uh, that, the alias tool, I think that's great. Yeah. No, it, you can override both the front end and the back end. You can over create overrides for the back end, but in the end, the, the back end um, is more complex for the longer term uh, related to maintenance. I mean, in the back end, screens are changing more often than the submission screen in the front end. Um, it can work out for a pretty long time, but as soon as there is some code being removed or really getting uh, shuffled around, then it might not work, and you basically have to check the override each time uh, when uh, Joomla releases a new version. Uh, so that makes them a bit more work. What you also can do is include, for example, uh, an additional CSS file in the backend, which is a bit less work on the longer term maintenance. Um, in, in, in that way, you can, um, for example, uh, like, like add some, hide some fields that are no, not, no longer related. Uh, another uh, option, and that's the same thing we uh, did for this uh, radio station project. Um, they are working only from the back end because the, the front end is entirely cached and things like that. So from that ending thing is not really what they want. 
but when they create an article, uh, we added several custom. Oh, it's on. <laughs> I have to move the screen. So we added a very simple buttons like the plugins, which I explained you can disable. You can also create your own plugins for those type of features. So we created, for example, uh, like video, insert an URL and it will be converted to the proper embed code. Um, and also on the side, we added a couple of additional fields. And this is all without hacking the Joomla core, but by, but by using plugins in Joomla. And um, Gisse, walking around, has written a great plugin book. And there's basically copy-paste code to achieve this in there. So there are a lot of options in the end. Uh, but still, also, we can improve Joomla itself a lot. Other questions? So on the first video, when your girlfriend mm -hmm. is testing, uh, she's not able to uh, upload a picture from a stop button uh, in the editing project. Is there a better, a better solution in the wanted or in the expert mode to, uh, to available a picture from the No. Video? Um, not directly. It's still the same media manager, and there is being worked on a new media manager. But uh, uh, do you know the, the status of that new media manager? Is that uh, being worked on still, or? They turned the uh, the full content over and just put the content. Yeah. Since they fixed the new MC, I'm not looking at them anymore. Yeah. But I know from uh, in the Netherlands they have the best deal at the Salomon Group, and we're planning on rewriting the media manager. Yeah. With resizing, uh, oh, with all the options that are there, because it is a good, it's yeah. a good pull request. I mean, the options that are there for media manager, I'm sure a lot of people like it. Yeah. But that's why we just, and maybe we can even start it here tomorrow to make that decision. Yeah. I'm also personally working on a plugin that's overrides for this for the same project because they they only for each new article they they upload a new image and never use the images that are being used before. So. Um, I created a uh, plugin for this where you can select uh, an image uh, and you do have some options to like resize this in the backend and then insert and that's using the, the Joomla system as well but making it more user friendly and I'm also looking into if I can make this available as a general plugin because I, I do see quite often that people are really getting annoyed with the whole image management. Yeah. And this is not maybe a very, very extensive, but enough for this client. I mean, they always have the images in the same size on the website, so it's been cropped, resized, no, no longer issues with like the, the five megabytes uh, loading and things like that. So there are a lot of ways, and there is already a lot of things out there. Uh, but I think the next step is that we all improve Joomla itself also, rather than keep trying, uh, finding, uh, and making our own wheels, basically. The image manager is indeed one of the biggest issues, firstly, if you have a lot of images, uh, if it rests on a, on a cold cache, and uh, you have to go and find, uh, find all the images, but the other lines can take uh, two, five minutes before you can do anything with that. Yeah. That's really a big uh, Yeah, issue. it is. Uh, the other one is one of your recommendations, is to make the session lifetime of those images and stuff. Not recommended for, say, security. Yeah. The, the, the autosave functionality in Joomla will be even the next better step. Um, but these suggestions were mainly about what's possible right now with options. But I fully agree that an autosave uh, and that you don't ever have those uh, issues with, with session being expired, that will be even better. Totally agree on that. With the image manager, with a lot of images, what I do see with the same project did in the past, because they have a lot of images, was that they started to create subfolders. And in the options of the media manager, you can select a specific folder, and they uh, created a folder for each month. So they don't have the delays, the, the delays uh, but it was on, a, on the old website and no longer needed on the new one. There is probably also a problem that if you upload an image and you have to pass the register JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but what they do, they change the route. So there's there's a really 
simple option when you go to the uh, oh. to go to the screen is easier. Um, Oh, no, there's the help button. Where is my option button? There it is. You can change this like images slash uh, 2015 slash uh, May. And then that will be the route for that time. You can't access the old, other ones, but that might be a work. I did saw some other hand forward. Okay, then I would like to thank you all. Uh, let's see if we can make some things happen and get back with feedback, test it, and let's see if we can improve as a start at least the article submission in the front of, in the Joomla core. So thank you.